There's still someone in the room? Yeah, he's, he's headed this way. Could you explain what the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board deadline of December 28th refers to? I've talked with our site, and we're not aware of what the December 28th deadline is about. We know that there's a December 18th meeting that we requested, and that meeting is a technical meeting and an open meeting. We know that there are at least two more public meetings that will be probably in quarter one of next year, in any event they won't be in December, that are related to the restart evaluation. But we are not aware of any hard deadline that's involved in this. In fact, I talked with our director of nuclear regulatory. His response was the last document he'd seen on an ASLB hearing regarded staff saying that they were willing to take legal briefs until into January. So we're not aware of this, and obviously if I could get something very specific, I could try to run that to ground. But at this point in time, you know, I'm assured by our site that there's ample time for the city to weigh in in January and beyond. Thank you. I wonder also if I might ask Dan Hirsch to come up, who I think has some information on that deadline as well. Yes, thank you very much. Let me explain. The commission has established an atomic safety and licensing board to rule on the very question that the council wants to weigh in on, whether a license amendment should be required, and if so, an opportunity for a full evidentiary hearing. One week ago, the atomic safety and licensing board issued an order establishing a briefing schedule on that issue. The parties that wish to support an adjudicatory hearing have to get their papers in by next Friday, and anyone who wants to weigh in as a friend of theirs is taking the same position by the following Friday, the 28th. So it has nothing to do with the meeting on the 18th. It has to do with an atomic safety and licensing board that will rule on whether or not there's an adjudicatory hearing, and there's a briefing schedule that has been established by that board. So you have a two-week window. The only reason Edison is urging you to defer this is to get you to weigh in when it's too late. Well, that is my fear and understanding, too. I think the hearings in January and later are probably on specifics, and we are not in this resolution giving an opinion of where we think they should be. We're just asking that they hold these hearings. And based on that, I would have to ask, I guess properly for a substitute motion, that we move back to consideration of the original resolution. Mr. Rosendahl. Yeah, no, there's a tsunami. Yes, look, what more warning do we need than a 6.3 earthquake and a tsunami en route coming to that location? What more do we need to know? That's the facts. That's the reality. For God's sake, do we need to have the big one? Well, 6.3 can be a big one, depending upon how it moves. We don't know right now, as I'm sitting here, how big the tsunami is going toward that area. It's huge. The whole notion of all the earthquakes we've been getting lately in Mexico, here. I'm waiting for the big one any day now, which I hope to God doesn't happen. But a 6.3 and a tsunami en route should be enough for everybody to go back to the no-brainer and make sure that we stop it dead in its tracks now and start that public process now and send a message to DWP as well. When we talk about going solar, let's not just talk about it. And we've done a great job, but not enough. We need to go solar with Southern California, sunny Southern California. Whatever it costs to go solar, we should do. It's our lives at stake today with a 6.3. We don't need any more warnings. I don't certainly need any more warnings. That's why I quickly second your motion again, Mr. Koretz, and it is a total no-brainer. If we didn't have an earthquake this morning, I might not be as emotional about it, but the truth of the matter is I'm scared to death about the future of us all here if we don't push solar more dramatically, and if it has to come out of our pockets, we need to do it, just like we need to support that Measure A, that half a cent sales tax, to have $220 million to be able to do our city. So 
This is absolutely serious. You can't get it any more serious than an earthquake right now. We don't know the dimensions of a tsunami. So I'm pleased, Mr. Koretz, that you restated your original motion and was very happy to second it again. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Weizar. Yes, thank you. And I agree with everything that Mr. Koretz and Mr. Rosenthal says, but I think as chair of Energy and Environment Committee, I have an obligation to assure that we have the proper facts before us. And DWP has informed me that there will be other opportunities for us to uh, state our position as a city and perhaps take the position that's in this resolution now. Uh, but we do our, our, we need to have one piece of input, and that is DWSP's analysis of this resolution. What does it mean to their current exchange of energy uh, in their electric grid and how this would impact it? And we need that information before we move forward. We may tweak the resolution to continue the spirit of what Mr. Koretz and Rosendahl is saying, but do it in such a way to include language that would also protect the interest of the city of Los Angeles. Um, let me again ask Mr. Brown, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Nelson, Mark Nelson up uh, from Edison. Now, you operate the facility, correct? We are the operator. You are the facility. operator. And a gentleman came up and stated some deadlines that are looming that makes it appear to us that we have to act now or we will miss our, on our opportunity as a city to state our case. Do you agree or disagree with what the gentleman said? I, I do not agree. I've spoken with our chief nuclear officer during the, the time that this was going on. And it was made clear to me that the city had ample time to weigh in. I also spoke with our director of nuclear regulatory, who indicated that some ASLB deadlines besides, which aren't directly related to the restart, are also being extended into January. So the gentleman concluded that you would like us to continue this so that then we will miss our opportunity to give input. Do you agree or, with or disagree with that? I, I disagree. That's not true. Okay. When, is anybody here from DWP? When Fred, can you uh, speak as to what type of information we need to get before we pass a resolution given this matter. I've been informed by DWP, and Mr. Nichols could not be here today, but that we actually need to thoroughly vet this and get our team uh, to review this before we uh, approve this item today. But what, 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 uh, and the ratepayer right advocate as well, what, what, um, why would we as a city or DWP need to provide input on this resolution prior to us voting on it? Actually, Wendy Yancey, Water and Power, Government Affairs, and I really would prefer that the head of the power system or Mr. Nichols um, dialogue with you about this. There are a lot of unanswered questions, and we're, we've, to, we've been told by Edison, we have a great working relationship with them, that this is not about the startup. The date that everyone's talking about, the December 18th, this is not about the startup of the station. This is about a technical, this is a technical meeting. There will be ample opportunity. We are not, this is not something that's going to happen within the next quarter, maybe even two. So um, I really think it would be best that we take a step back, look at, because we do work with them. We've helped them in the past as far as going forward, too, as to how to even serve their customers when, because this plant is no longer functioning. It's not a part of the system. So I, I don't understand that. Yeah, so finally, this comes down to who do you believe? Will we or will we not miss our opportunity to provide our input? Uh, I'm looking at the operator of this facility. I would assume they know the deadlines, what opportunities we have. I'm listening to our own operator here, DWP. They're telling us that uh, we will not miss uh, our opportunity to get, provide input, but we do need to provide some analysis of this. Uh, otherwise, if you believe what some other people come up here and have said, Let's vote now, but there may be things in here that may be detrimental to the City of Los Angeles and DWP if we do not provide that input later. At the end of the day, I believe in the spirit of this resolution. I'm not trying to be obstructionist. I believe there's a better process to move forward with, and we're getting conflicting information, and it's a matter about who you believe as we move forward. 